Good morning, Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave. Welcome to the MagnaWave office hours. We come to you uh, every Tuesday morning at nine o'clock Eastern time to discuss PEMF and MagnaWave, uh, questions you may have about utilizing a machine, protocols, uh, all types of stuff like that. So whatever your questions are, please feel free to put them in the chat box and be happy to uh, answer those questions for you so you can have a better understanding of PEMF and uh, there's certainly a lot of stuff out there to um, to talk about and to learn and there's a lot of information uh, <clears throat> some of which is good some of it's uh, not totally on po on point but you need to have those questions answered and that's why I'm here to answer those questions my name is Pat Zemer I'm the CEO of MagnaWave I've been uh, operating MagnaWave or operating and providing PEMF services since 2002 um, which is not longer than anybody in the country, but it's a long time uh, compared to what a lot of people are doing. And, and so the, uh, the experiences that I've been through are certainly available to you so I can help you uh, with your uh, treatments and so on and so forth as you utilize this great therapy. A couple of things here we, before we get going. Uh, certainly uh, you know that we're doing flash briefings on Alexa. So if you've got an Android phone or an Apple phone, you can download the Alexa app or if you have an uh, Alexa Echo Dot or an Echo at your home, uh, please go into your settings and uh, request a MagnaWave flash briefing. I have uh, tidbits offered every day dealing with PEMF, everything from history to protocols uh, to how it was developed and how it came over the years. Uh, and many of those uh, programs will be, will be provided by Alexa herself uh, as she pre presents the information. And you want to listen to these because she'll also give you some uh, uh, opportunities to text certain things or to enter contests to uh, win anything from attachments to uh, MagnaWave gear or whatever it may be so certainly uh, come join us on Alexa and uh, learn more about PEMF and have the opportunity to win some some great prizes with Alexa's help. Also uh, the MagnaWave app is up and functioning and uh, on the app someone asked me uh, this morning I re received uh, an email from someone asking about the is there a charge for the app? Well yes there is uh, 26 bucks I believe it is at this point. <clears throat> they want to know what you got with that. They don't uh, have a business but they want to know how it may work for them and I pointed out that they could use the app to keep track of their own treatments of their of themselves or their family or their own horses or their own pets whatever they may be doing because at some point they may want to send that to a veterinarian and the app will allow you to do that plus the app is a uh, hand available guide all the guidelines for human and small animals and horses are on the app so you can go there and uh, search for uh, or see particular uh, uh, conditions and see the protocols and the directions uh, for approaching those types of conditions. So the app is uh, valuable and available to you if you'd like to participate. Those of you who are certified practitioners or um, uh, machine owners from that perspective so be sure to check out the app. Also always remember that the, the group MagnaWave PEMF Education uh, International Education and Resources is available for you. We receive questions every day about specific indications and what you really need to do is go to that group uh, search what you're looking for and and uh, if we worked with it it'll be there uh, we have we're continually adding continually adding information to that particular group in groups you can search for things on the pages you can't <clears throat> so if we post information on our MagnaWave page it's like reading a newspaper if you put it on the shelf you can't find it the next day but if you go to the group uh, that we have you can go in there and search kind of like having an archive of your local newspaper so you can go in and search for what you want to know more about so it's certainly uh, available to you so uh, those are some things I've got several questions I've been asked I want to first tell you about the uh, thoroughbred makeover the retired racehorse project that we uh, had a, a wonderful opportunity to have sponsored this past weekend one of the sponsors and participate uh, or over I guess 400 horses there four or five thousand people in attendance throughout the weekend ten different disciplines are represented basically what they do is they take a racehorse off the track and then they retrain it to reproduce 
repurpose it uh, in a particular discipline or area of discipline. They had everything from hunter jumpers to western horses to vaulting to freestyle uh, exhibits. It was really cool to watch how these people have taken these racehorses off of the track and uh, repurposed them into other disciplines. It really shows a lot of people have talked about all the you know what happens to racehorses and what about the injuries to racehorses and all of that. But so this was a perfect example. Uh, and and Rosie Napravnik, uh, Rosie Sharp Napravnik, one of the most famous and and uh, most successful women uh, female jockeys in the world, uh, and still today. And she hasn't raced. And, and three years uh, was there competing in the eventing class. She came out third overall. Uh, we were very happy to be a sponsor of Rosie and, and uh, there's a video on the uh, Facebook page. If you'd like to have a look at it, just scroll down a little bit and you'll see that video and it will also be uh, shared over and posted on the resource page. But it was really a fun project. What was really cool to me was uh, as we were exhibiting there and uh, we had, I don't know, five or six machines out and several people in the booth uh, offering demos and, and treating people. And, and a lot of people have uh, sore backs and knees and ankles and arms and shoulders. And we were doing our best to treat these folks throughout the event. Uh, so they would feel better and then we had practitioners on the grounds who were in fact treating horses and they were busy uh, but what was really fun and rewarding to me was nearly everyone that came up I would say out of the four days that we were there uh, Wednesday Thursday Friday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday and even Sunday morning the five days we were there the people that came up that were familiar with MagnaWave. They had experienced themselves personally or they had experienced on, the, on their horse or they had seen it on their dogs, used on their dogs or their horses and, and it was just amazing how they had come to understand what it would do. So that was fun and it was a great uh, great weekend. If you get a chance to go next year to experience the Retired Racehorse Project <clears throat> funded primarily by the ASPCA uh, and uh, to see it and, and witness it, it'd really be something to do. Come to, come to Kentucky, go to the horse park and, and enjoy it and have a big time. Okay, uh, so we did that. If you have any questions, just post them in the chat box. As I said, I'd be happy to uh, to answer them for you. Uh, morning to everybody who's, who's with us. Uh, uh, Tracy Walker Bush was with us at the weekend. Aaron was there, Cameron was there, Elaine was there, uh, Debbie was there, I was there. Uh, so we had a really good time uh, talking with everyone. If you have any questions, put them in the chat box. Okay, um, so here's a couple of questions uh, that I've received. Does anyone have any special agreements or terms when working with a veterinarian? Well, certainly you want to talk to your veterinarian and uh, it varies. Some veterinarians will give you an idea of how they'd like to work with you. It's been my experience that most veterinarians want to refer people to you uh, or unless they want to have a relationship to where you work with them and they provide the services uh, and, and pay you to provide the services for them. Uh, the agreement will vary from veterinarian to veterinarian. Uh, I'm sure there are some special agreements that people have had. If you, uh, But if you have special questions about that, you can contact the office and Aaron would be more than happy to kind of walk you down that street and how you maybe would work with a veterinarian. It's a great way to go, uh, whether you're doing small animals or people. Uh, I've got a, uh, from the human perspective, we uh, have a practitioner in Florida who each day works with a different doctor. His practice is almost entirely human, so he works with a cardiologist, he works with an uh, uh, orthopedic doctor, he works with a couple of chiropractors, and he goes to their offices, spends an afternoon at each office, treating and working with their clients. And um, so that's something to do, and we'd be more than happy to help you uh, bridge that gap if that's something that you'd like to look at doing. Uh, there are some procedures that he used, and certainly helps if you know people, and he does know people and did know some people, so it opens some doors for him, but it's certainly an opportunity that is there. <clears throat> A question that I received, and let's see if there's any questions that have come up. If not, uh, simply put them in the chat box and I'd be happy to answer them for you. The uh, question is, is uh, bottle calf. What do you do with a bottle calf? Uh, pretty much uh, the vet's pretty much given up on him and the owners uh, have contacted this particular practitioner. Where a bottle calf is a calf that maybe was a twin and the mother doesn't have enough milk 
for both of them. Sometimes the mother has pro problems with milk. Uh, sometimes there's a, the mother doesn't survive for one reason or another, and now you got a calf that won't take milk or doesn't know what to do. Well, typically it's a shortness, it's a, a deficiency of colostrum because they get colostrum from their mother uh, when they are nursing, and uh, there are some things to do. There are some colostrum sub reborn uh, by Halstrom, which is the makers of Lubricin. Uh, they have a product called Reborn uh, that we have personally used and understand and personally recommended uh, for these types of situations. Uh, so you can call the Halstrom company and uh, talk about uh, Reborn and use it for these calves if they can use it. Also from the standpoint of of how it affects them neurologically and muscularly as they're striving to get the nourishment that they need. Certainly to treat them helps their blood flow, helps their blood oxygenation, helps potentially keep them stable uh, uh, psychologically and muscularly. So I would certainly think treatments would be a benefit in treating a bottled calf, but certainly you want to uh, find out what's there. And you know, people are, all, one person understands how to go out and find a colostrum product. Someone doesn't know if a colostrum product will work and they haven't embraced it. So uh, certainly I would take a look at that to find ways to boost the colostrum of the calf and see if you can get it to take that and to uh, help its, <clears throat> help its uh, survival. Uh, another question uh, that I have received is uh, talks about has anyone worked on contracted tendons or uh, from an injury? And now this we're going to the question goes on to talk about a horse, but this plays uh, for people and small animals as well. Uh, the horse is a couple years old from the injury, so the injury is not new, and uh, is left on one. Uh, that has left one rear leg quite a terrible state. It actually is being ridden, but gets sore after long rides. Well, it's good that the horse has survived to the point that it can be ridden. Uh, tendon seems like scar tissue is keeping him from lengthening uh, the tendon or the stride or what he's trying to do. And so what, what the PEMF has been shown to do in those types of situations, I once had a racehorse uh, in uh, Florida <coughs> that had a, uh, an ankle injury and the, the scarring was bad and quite large on the back of the ankle and it wasn't currently or at the time wasn't really impacting his movement but it was beginning to and they knew that because the scarring was continuing to become more solid to become uh, thicker or more solid if you will and uh, they wanted to know what to do and what we did is we went in and treated the ankle aggressively with MagnaWave to soften up the scar tissue. We really couldn't eliminate the scar tissue at that point, but we were able to soften it up so where it was almost like a, a uh, squeeze ball that you have to make it more pliable so it did not interfere with the range of motion in the ankle. And that would be the same thing here uh, with this particular question that's being asked. The scar tissue is obviously limiting the tendon from, from lengthening or stretching the way it should and, and being the, the uh, uh, body function that that it has and so I would go, certainly go in and treat the treat the area aggressively uh, to get hopefully more pliability uh, to so you would have the improved range of motion and perhaps the horse will be able to go and not be as sore or get sore from long rides the same thing applies to people if you've had an injury and it's been a couple of years ago you have a knee replacement there is scar tissue to, that develops over time it can maybe get a little Little more invasive to the situation so if you can treat and keep it supple then you can be uh, more flexible uh, with your knee or your hip or whatever situation that you're dealing with and the same thing for small animals as well it's a good therapy to just to help the well-being of the body and when you're dealing with scar tissue I was talking with a gentleman yesterday who had an, a hip replacement two months ago and has had very good results utilizing the MagnaWave had a knee replacement I guess maybe three weeks ago now and he's one of the doctor told him uh, you know after it happens and well you're gonna be okay and you'll go home tomorrow on the next day it was not okay and he came out of his anesthetic and he, he wanted to die he was in so much pain and he couldn't figure out what was going on and the doctor finally came in and said well uh, people do have a rejection situation with their knees only about six percent of knee replacement patients have this 
But when you do have it, it's a bad deal. And he's had nothing but bleeding. He's had nothing but scarring buildups, uh, scar tissue buildup in the area. They had to go back in and take, scrape out all the scar tissue and clean everything up. And now it's better. And he's staying on the, on the MagnaWave to try to keep that scarring from developing any further. But it was a, a rejection kind of thing to his knee and and so those things happen and when you find yourself in that situation that's where a magna wave can do it how can it do it well from the blood blood the availability of helping the blood oxygenation and the blood flow to the area and just making the, the blood system of the body the body healthier so the body can better heal itself in that situation so those are the kind of things that you want to uh, uh, to look at and how the PEMF can be beneficial <clears throat> to what's going on let me take a look here and make sure there aren't any questions uh, Jason has joined us thanks Jason for being with us uh, I don't see anything else uh, cropping up at this point so um, I'll go on but if you have any questions just put let me go back to the top let me see here maybe uh, so let's see Robert asks a question is it safe to treat children with PEMF therapy <clears throat> Robert asks well uh, over the years it is uh, people have treated uh, children a lot uh, for various indications uh, I would not say that you'd want to put the PEMF on a child uh, every day for an hour and, and treat the child there are no studies out there there's nothing that we've been able to find that is contraindicates treating a child uh, certainly they have bone issues they can break a bone they can you know they can uh, we've got videos and testimonials from uh, children with cerebral palsy and they treat them and they their balance is better their their stability is better and, and so it, it can be beneficial and in those in those cases to certainly certainly utilize you always want to know what the indication is you always want to be in contact with your doctor when you're talking about those types of situations but it is is the kind of thing that, that you can approach uh, and certainly um, uh, uh, Elaine has used it on her kids when they've had some bumps and bruises from uh, the, the, the uh, soccer field or the baseball diamond or whatever it may be it certainly will will help that uh, so it there there you have it, it, it there's no contraindication that you wouldn't there have been people there I mean you understand that there are people that that uh, their thing is they want to use integrative medicines for anything that they can do or integrative therapies for anything they can do and uh, various uh, uh, folks have had that and they have used it on their infants and their children uh, over the years to uh, to do that I think I'm getting my phone here is that what we're getting yeah the white phone that's all I need <laughs> thank you very much good deal so Aaron Aaron's here she brought me my phone it's on let's see how the battery is it's low let me plug it in so if you got any questions and you'd like to call me uh, Brad will put the uh, put the phone number up on the screen but you can give me a call the number is 502-599-9722 502-599-9722 if you call today and you like to talk about something one of the topics we're talking about we're going to take care of and get you some uh, gear here I got a nice MagnaWave super insulated mug that I love I need a little drink a little water here so um, give me a call and we got some uh, MagnaWave gear here for you today if you got something that you'd uh, like to discuss about what we're talking about or something in general. I do want to ask a question before I get into the uh, rest of the questions that I've got here, and there are several, but one of the things that we talk about when people utilize MagnaWave as a business, and I believe, wish I could tell you about what it was like for me back in 2002 and 2006 and 2007 as we got deeper into the MagnaWave itself, and, and that was, and my question to you is, do you have someone in your group, someone in your group of influencers whose opinion you value, uh, who does not support or believe uh, in what you're doing? That's my question. Uh, if you have that, you might uh, give me a yes comment or or uh, give me a thumbs up that you, that you have that uh, because that's a big issue and that's something that we can talk about and the, the basis there is how people influence what you do and your success and how you perhaps need to deal with that. So the question is, do you have people in your surroundings or people that you deal with uh, who don't agree or don't understand and don't support what you do and yet you value uh, their opinion? 
uh, about many things. So there you go. There's the question. All right, let's see. Um, person asks, as a horse uh, that has a uh, contract at a particular tick-borne disease, it's Ehrlichosa, uh, and it's, it affects the eyes and the, the vision of the horse. And what she wants to know, is it something that MagnaWave can be used for? Uh, the horse appears to be dealing with a uh, situation uh, of blindness and, and what to do. Now, can I say that we're going to be able to reverse something like that? No. But if you got a situation that, that is developing and deteriorating, uh, obviously, how does that happen? Inflammation in the eye, uh, problems with circulation in the area, which allows the blindness to all of a sudden begin to come on, and all of that. So the basis of what we're doing is improving oxygenation, making the cellular part of the body healthier, so the body can better heal itself. Could you potentially treat the head, the overall body? There's two reasons I'm gonna to say to treat the head and the overall body, but if you treated the head and the eyes, can you improve the circulation there? It's been used for cataracts, been used for many different things where inflammation is part of the key and there is circulation through the eye and you do need to, to help keep that at flowing as smoothly as possible. And that's all we do is allow the body to better flow uh, smoother. So, so the situation would be to certainly treat that and can you, could you potentially uh, keep it from getting worse? Perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps you could. Uh, the, the basis sounds like you could. And I would also on occasion with this treat the full body because, and we've had this conversation a lot over the weekend dealing with people, talking with people there at the Thoroughbred Make or the Retired Racehorse Project is, is they would ask, well, why do you treat the whole body? Why don't you just treat my knee? Well, we do. And, and you can get relief by doing just just the knee or treating just the hip or whatever the situation may be. But if you treat the whole body, the whole torso, the whole body of the horse or the small animal is where is that you're allowing the blood to become better oxygenated. You're improving the overall blood flow of the body. Where is that going over the next 10, 15, 20, 24 hours? It's going to go to that area that you're dealing with. So you're going to treat it to get a jump start on what's going on. And then you're gonna treat the whole pond, if you will, and, and let that better nourish the eyes or the area of the body that has an injury over the next uh, 24, 48 hours. The effects can last that long. And, and so you want to have that support to be in the system uh, in dealing with those types of situations. Certainly with Lyme disease, uh, they've had situations where it gets focused in a particular area and you wanna treat that area to try to break it up, try to move it, try to get the inflammation relieved so you don't have the discomfort and the pain. And, and we've had great results uh, utilizing the, this PEMF type of therapy in those situations. So to think that it uh, could help here could be certainly, certainly uh, worth a try to help overall health and wellness. <clears throat> of that animal. Uh, something that we're going to be, you might, a term you'll be hearing uh, here in the future, zoom rejuvenation is something we like to do is to speed up the rejuvenation uh, of the body and to help you feel better on your quest for health and wellness. All right, again, any questions, uh, give me a call. Uh, if you call and ask a question or discuss something with me, uh, giving you my uh, uh, question, uh, new comments. We've got nine new comments, so let me come over and see if I can get these. Uh, let me see where they come down here and see. Uh, yes, we got a thumbs up on the uh, on the question that I asked. Yes, yes. Um, to the question is, do you have somebody that's around you uh, that does influence you and you value their opinion and they don't really support or understand what you what you do and and uh, what you need to do to kind of approach that is to, and it's hard but you you can't let that influence what's happening you got to you you've got to separate yourself from that because what happens when that when that affects you when that person says that then that that affects your believability here we got a phone call coming in let's see what we got let me open it up here Good morning. Hi. Hi. Who do I have? My name's Janet Hatch. Hi, Janet. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great. What's your question? I was calling to give you a testimonial. Great. Talk about it. Uh, um, you know, as a new practitioner, I've been treating myself. Uh-huh. And as an unintended result, but welcome result, I had been holding the small butterfly 
with my hands. Uh huh. And I have Dupuytren's contracture, it's, where the the last two digits on my hands draw down tight to my my palm. Correct. And I had that treated by a hand doctor. Mm hmm. But by holding the small butterfly, I have loosened up those tendons and reduced the um, swelling, the bumps that are a result of that. Right. That's so it's like the it's like the tendons in the horse, you know. Right. It's really loosened up and softened my hand, and I just thought I'd let you know. Oh, you know that, Janet. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm trying to pull the practitioner's name out of my head at this point. Um, uh, in Phoenix, I believe she is. <clears throat> uh, it'll come to me. But she has tr done a. She treated one man whose fist was so his hand was like this, and and so she began to treat him, and he got his movement back in his overall hand. Same condition that you have, a, a little more uh, accentuated. And she got to the point that she was treating several people like that. So it, it's great that you shared that, and I'm so happy that you had that result. And I have that situation myself. There's a lot of arthritis in my family, and it's visible in their hands. And, and um, I've been blessed. I've been doing this now for 17 or 18 years, and you, I have no arthritis at all in my hands. And, uh, and so it's evidenced by what you did, holding on to the uh, holding on to the coil and treating the horses uh, gave me some benefit yeah. to my hand. Janet, thank you so much for uh, sharing that. Let me ask you the question I ask: uh, Do you have somebody in your group, in your surroundings, uh, whose opinion you value, uh, who does not necessarily support what you're doing? Well, it's not so much a matter of support; they're just not familiar with the idea. They're not familiar. So they're hesitant. They're hesitant, and they, they don't necessarily believe. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that that's a challenge. And, and so how do you tell them, when you talk with them, how do you tell them or try to convey to them um, what you do? Well, I'm, I'm showing them my own hands because they've seen those before. Perfect. And then also I'm trying to get some of those little videos that you have, like the blood, <coughs> and showing them those sorts of things, right. too. Great. Uh, really, what you've got there is a is a visible testimonial when you can show them your hands. Uh, we all yeah. don't have that. Uh, I can say, well, my hands look great, but I they didn't know like they know with you the situation that you had with your with your uh, with your hands, and they can see that and understand that. And and really, you've got a great testimonial there that you can share with these folks uh, to help them see and further believe. And when they believe, let me ask you this, when these people are more supportive of you, not that they're not supportive, I, I don't mean to say that, but they don't understand or they don't know, once they start coming around, how do you feel? Oh, it's tremendous. Right. You know, and, and you feel validated. Exactly. And, and so, and that's where I'm going with it. And thank you so much for, for sharing that. Uh, and we want to people, and validation is what we're looking for. Validation, yeah. credibility, uh, and there's many different ways to approach that. But the bottom line is you, de you don't need that person. I don't mean to get rid of your friends, but you don't need that person, uh, I those people uh, influencing your thoughts because it becomes visible. It's like when you go into a stall with a horse and you're afraid, the horse knows it. And, yeah. and and so if you've got that burdening your burdening your body or burdening your mind, your customers know it, and, and uh, they can see. They don't know what it is, but they can see that the confidence level isn't there. And so you really need the support of the people around you. Well, Janet, thank you so much for for sharing your uh, uh, treatment and your testimonial with us. And uh, we'll make a note and make sure that you get your uh, MagnaWave mug. We'll send it right out to you. And uh, appreciate your call. Thanks. Thanks for the office hours. I uh, really enjoy them, Pat. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was Janet and a great testimonial. And uh, that kind of lends itself to what I was talking with you. you. You need to find, use one of my stories. Use a story that can be documented. Use your your available resources, and believe me, they're there. And today, with the internet, there's a lot of way you, ways you can work on these people that are around you and and uh, who don't necessarily uh, they just say, yeah, okay, this is what she is doing or what he's doing, and um, 
them <clears throat> and they're not using you uh, because they, they're really not sold and yet they need to because they're your friends and they're the people that, that you want to work with and have help help you. So uh, th those are things that, that you need to do with and I'm happy to discuss that with anyone at any time if they want if they want to do that or if you wanted to do that to help you through those obstacles. Uh, it, or at the event I was talking with a particular practitioner and, and uh, about that type of situation, how to get people in their community to really embrace and understand what's going on and it becomes a challenge and this person said to me I have to kind of resolve myself that it's me and it's not the case. It's just a matter of figuring out where this is and shifting the paradigm to where when people see that, that credibility that you have and what you're doing, whether it's the testimonials, send them to the testimonial page. Send them to the MagnaWave PEMF, uh, uh, um, what is it, MagnaWave PEMF International and Education Group, and they can tell them to search for what they're looking for. Get them to go there and see this because once they're in there, Here's the little here's a little side trick that happens, and that's not a side trick, but it's something that happens. If you tell your customers, go to this resource page, search these indications, and see how this is being used, you're not telling them. Number one, they sit back and say, well, of course, Pat's going to tell us how good this is. Pat's going to tell us what because he wants he wants me to to do it. Tell them, and then when they go there in the future, they'll get notified when people post things there, and then they can even learn more. Got somebody else calling in? Good morning. Good morning, Pat. It's Tanya Austin. How are you? Good, Tanya. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Good. What's up? Well, I have been working with um, a lady who, um, so I have a kind of a question on how you would go about um, treating um, somebody um, who um, actually a buggy wheel had uh, ran over her leg. Um, and I've been work. yeah, so I've been working with her about the last month. Um, she's doing weekly treatments. Mm -hmm. Um so I've been going pretty aggressively with her leg. We, I have the mat and, of course, the loop. And we've been working with that and doing some parts of her body, doing a 40-minute treatment. When we usually go to somebody's house once a week, um, she's got a lot of inflammation and, you know, almost even looks like uh, fluid retention and whatnot in her leg, I guess. I don't know if I'm wording it the best way. Right. Um, but I'm not seeing in, in – actually, it's probably been about five weeks – been treating her we're not really seeing any progression of it getting better um so last week treated a little different kind of doing like you were saying earlier doing like the whole body more of a whole body treatment for right. her, trying to get things going right but i'm just wondering um you know what what way would you go at something like this because i don't want her to get discouraged because i know even though we're not seeing improvement that it it is helping her she's not in any kind of pain it's just you know she's got this leg that's that's you know swelled up and um she's working daily she's just okay so, yeah let's let's talk about that one thing here real quick though so i don't lose you brad my my charger is unplugged over there i wonder if you could see where that white plug is right there see it's come out of the I'm about to, my phone's about to die so let me get it plugged up here so what you're telling me tanya is uh, uh, she doesn't have any pain. She's able to work and motivate, but yet she's got a lot of inflammation uh, in her leg uh, that you're trying to deal with. Yeah, you know, she's um, she rides her bicycle every day. She she works. She's where she works. She's on her leg every day. So it's you know, it, she's not able to elevate the leg much except for at the end of the day. Um, she's had ultrasounds, so we knew that there was no blood clots or. Were, you know anything like that um yeah and it's just so I, let me ask you this you're treating your is it lower leg upper leg lower leg yeah Lo lower leg below the knee yes okay and um so you're using are you placing the leg on the mat is that what you're doing yep i did what i did um is i placed the the, the mat underneath her leg and um treated her uh 10 minutes that way and then i used the loop and place that more on the top, um, going from like her knee down, and then would place the the loop um, underneath her foot, and kind of went on it that way. Um, just kind of each week, kind of move it around a little bit, going at that leg some different ways. And that's good. And and so, what is your setting? Um, well, we have the. You mean as far as the max? I have the max, so I'm just doing it to. It pretty much she can take it almost all the way up. Okay. Well, here's the here's the challenge. 
Uh, I'm writing down your name so we can make sure and get you the mug. Oh, sure. Uh, um, here's the challenge. In, and obviously there's an anatomical problem going on to cause the inflammation to be there. Right. And, and so, and, and if you put, you'll take a horse and you put it out. And, and, but a person quite often won't do what it takes to resolve an issue. I mean, it's like saying, uh, okay, I'm going to work on your um, ulcers and you have you ulcers because you eat nothing but spicy foods. And right. so I'm treating your ulcers and you're continuing to eat, to eat spicy foods and so we're at an impasse. And, and that's a little bit of probably where you are. If she's not having any real pain, but obviously, let me ask you this, is her weight an issue? Um, I wouldn't say no. I mean, a little bit, but not excessive. She's not, you know, she's not excessively overweight, no. But um, could be a little bit? Could be a, a little bit, okay. you know. Well, I just want to, just want to ask that, clarify that as, as sure. we're discussing this. So what, what, what you've got is if she's riding her bike and she's on her feet at work and she's doing that all day long and then she gets home, does she get home and when you treat her, does she then put her feet up for three or four hours? Well, and I've suggested that, but and, and I don't know. And that's what I said. I'm like, you know, when I leave, you know, you should probably sit here, relax, make sure you're drinking your fluids, you know, really increase your water intake, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure that, that she's doing that. Uh, but I, I feel like she is getting something out of the treatments because she's continuing to pay and have me come back. So well, I yeah, I mean, it, obviously, it, it's, it's you know, she may say that, and here's what happens. Someone may say, well, I don't have any pain, or I'm not having any pain, or I'm dealing with my pain comfortably. And so you're able to keep her in a situation. You know, you've heard me say a million times, treat as long as function continues to improve, and treat as often as necessary to maintain that function. And, right. and, and that's kind of the mode that you're in. She doesn't want to feel bad. She doesn't want it to hurt because obviously it has hurt. And you've got it. But if, you, if you're in that situation that what she's doing is asking this to come back every day. You're there once a week and she's out six days doing whatever it takes or whatever she needs to do. And which she probably has to do. But what she's doing and it's continuing to do this. The only other thing that would probably help more at this point would be to treat her three times a week. And that, times a week. and that may okay. not fit your schedule, but you want to get you want to get it to where you can get ahead of the problem. Which what okay. you're doing is you're maintaining her comfort, but in order to get ahead of the problem and and change that uh, circulation issue uh, is is the challenge, and and that is a challenge that 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 you're going to have. And it's like someone has a spur on their heel. Well, you can make them feel better. For a few days but that spur as soon as you're finished is going to be punching back into that muscle to cause that pain to come back or the inflammation to return and that sounds like that's a little bit where you are but you are maintaining the comfort uh, of okay. your client okay and you would continue to do like the mat under her leg and, yeah i think that would be i think that'd be excellent what you also want to think about is that swelling that fluid that movement has to go into her upper leg has to get up into her torso in order to get through the whole body to get so the lymphatic system can better do its job globally if you will in her whole body so I would not miss the opportunity to treat her lower torso and her upper leg so they're all ready to go with the blood flow and the and the circulation at that point okay all right all right yes okay. thank you very much Tanya thank you for calling Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Couple of great questions there, and, and that is a challenge. If you're dealing with somebody who doesn't have the time to support what you're doing, that's a challenge. Uh, and, and so what I would recommend there, if the client will do it, or if, if you have time to, probably one of the critical things, and a lot of times, and I'll, I'll say this, is you got somebody like that, you maybe want to treat them every day for seven, eight days and try to get the inflammation to where it's going down and then maybe do it every other day for a few days. And if you can get it to where you can really get ahead of it, then you can maintain that. Getting ahead of it 
is is sometimes the issue and you need to to look at where that's at and then you need to look at what people will do uh, Tanya deals a lot in the Amish community so there are some things uh, medicine wise they'll do or they will embrace or they won't embrace <clears throat> and so she has to deal with that whole situation as well Tanya thank you for uh, for giving me the call and uh, call, talking with us if you like have a question you'd like to share with us or if you'd like to have some gear and you have a testimonial as one testimonial and one uh, challenge uh, for treatment uh, we're certainly here to uh, take those calls and have that uh, conversation let's see uh, anything um, uh, Janet points out don't forget to treat the per periphery that's what I was just talking about uh, with uh, Tanya is to treat the periphery it's very important to uh, we always as I pointed out earlier you treat the full body then treat the area where you're having the issue that you need to do with, deal with uh, any other questions uh, please uh, put them in there uh, let's see um, uh, had someone write that they were attending an animal rescue adoption event reptiles uh, what to do well I'll tell you in a minute but let's let's first get this phone call hello this is Pat who do I have Hi, Pat. it's Taylor Parrish calling yes ma'am um, I was just trying to figure out for hydrowave what kind of dosage you would do for someone with Crohn's disease okay um, uh, how far along is what they how far along is their indication They've had it for a while. Uh, had it basically their entire life. Right. I, I would think probably uh, approaching something like that with the hydro wave to help basically fight any bacteria in their body uh, as they're suffering from these types of, of, of things would be do, you certainly want to use the hydro wave to pick up the oxygenation uh, of the body and to do that. I would go uh, maybe with um, for the first uh, couple of weeks maybe a, a half ounce a day or an ounce a day in a uh, 20 ounce bottle of water okay. uh, distilled water to get them going and then the regular dosage that's recommended at that at that point is four ounces of hydrowave to a gallon of distilled water and then they yep. take they take six ounces in the morning and six ounces <clears throat> excuse me in the evening but I would jump start you know um, a loading start. dose okay. to, to get going in that type situation and okay. give me your name again who is this Taylor Parrish Taylor Parrish okay want to get you your uh, your MagnaWave gear Taylor thanks for calling perfect thank you so much Pat uh-huh bye bye have a good one bye uh, great question on on the hydro wave jump starting uh, is always a, a good thing to do when you're using that again for those of you who don't know hydro wave is a super oxygenated uh, silver water uh, or water with silver and it's a nano sized particle of silver uh, that is not considered a heavy metal so it won't leach to the body and what they do is they put this silver in the water and then through a special process a pro pro proprietary process they the sil the oxygen that's in the water binds or bonds to the little silver molecule and then when it's consumed it will move into the bloodstream and but it does it's like a little cluster of oxygen moving around the bloodstream comes up on similar charge negatively charged bacteria will discharge attack that and hopefully kill it come back together and move on until it's passed out of the body People have had tremendous res results. There's testimonials on the website. There's a re there's a whole report by Dr. Jane Goldberg on the website website as to uh, how it's been used and and what it's uh, uh, effective for and and that's what it does and it, it's a it's a neat thing. So that's that's a hydrowave uh, water. Check it out if you have any questions. Give us a call and we'd be happy to uh, help you with regard to that. If you'd like to give me a call, it's 502-599-9722. Again, if you call, give me a call, a uh, little water here. We have a uh, MagnaWave mug that we, uh, stainless steel insulated mug. We'd love to send you if you give me a call, if you have a question or something you'd like to share. Uh, we've been going now about 46 minutes. We've got another uh, five, 10 minutes here before I have to move on to my next uh, scheduled meeting. but. Great questions today, and I always enjoy uh, having these uh, questions. Uh, I go back to the question I received: attending an animal rescue adoption event, reptiles. <clears throat> Check. Uh, what should I do? Uh, well, what I would do, and what I recommend for you to do, is go to the MagnaWave PMF International Education and Resource page and search reptiles. 
Uh, we were working with a reptile rescue in Michigan who they have purchased a machine. They used uh, Haley Fisher and her partners uh, machine originally to to rescue and save an, a bald eagle and and uh, tremendous results. And now they have their own machine in the rescue that they're using on these injured reptiles. And having great success, and, and so it's certainly something. And there are there was a a uh, comment on the Facebook uh, page uh, the today or yesterday I saw where someone was treating a, a chicken, and uh, we've had chickens and parakeets and birds and reptiles uh, treated uh, over the years with very good success. They have blood, they have blood flow, they have inflammation, and we want to serve to help them uh, be healthier with their health and wellness as well. So yes, it will work. Learn. <clears throat> that goes back to the people that I was talking about. Do people support what you're doing? Do you value their opinion and they really don't support or they don't know, they don't believe, they don't think that you know what you're doing? That type of stuff. Learn these stories. Go to these locations, search your areas of interest, be able to give these stories back to somebody and say, hey, if you want to see this, go over here to this page and see it or this group and see it. Here's the story. Here's where you read more. If you can get them to where they read more, they'll do that and all that will do is build your credibility to help you be more successful in what you're doing. Let's see who we got here. Good morning. Who do I have this morning? Hi, this is uh, Ben Gimbert speaking. How are you doing, Ben? Good, Ben. How are you? I'm doing good. Hey, uh, I've got a question. and I, I, I typed it up on, on your message there, but maybe you can answer two questions that I have. One was uh, with the semi machine that I have. I noticed that your connections are different on the higher machines. And right. And if somebody were to purchase another machine, they wouldn't be able to use the connections. Is that correct? You'd have to buy the uh, uh, you'd have to buy a new or you or you'd have to buy the new attachments that go with the machine. Well, the the, uh, the basic attachments come with each machine. So you would receive if you did upgrade, you would receive. Uh, a new attachments with the machine. Now there are some adapters that we have available that will allow you to use uh, to interchange. The, the semi attachments won't interchange with the other machines as easily as the other machine attachments can interchange with the semi. Okay. Okay. Uh, but that 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 is the case. I regret that, but that that's a, f a factory issue. Uh, but we do have some uh, some adapters available that will allow that to uh, to happen. And, okay. uh, and and uh, now that's a very good question to get an adapter to be able to use the uh, semi attachments. I think I can get that done. Just haven't ever never approached that before, but we can we can do that. Uh, well, I just no I just <coughs> noticed that uh, on your uh, when you were when you had the other videos going and you were describing the other machines, and I uh, noticed that you had them that with uh, the higher machines you push in and then then you turn to click. Right. Went, well, wow, that's that's a different, definitely a different uh, type of connection than the, right. the one that the semi has. And I'm going, I wonder if they made that because the units are higher powered. I don't, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you exactly why they did that, and and um, it, it's a very, it's a viable uh, situation. Is the semi is a digital device, so it is more sensitive to variations of electricity. <clears throat> more sensitive to resistance, meaning that it may need to be reset. It's kind of like a computer. You reset your computer once in a while, right? It reboot your computer, reboot your phone, so on and so forth. Well, uh, there are people out there who have made attachments on their own. Because you can buy a lot of these parts at various places and you could say, oh, okay, I'll wire this up and do this and make my own attachment. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it ultimately what happens is the attachment, it, for example, even in the larger machines, it takes so many feet of wire, ha you have to have so many feet of wire in an attachment in order for the attachment to work. If you have less than that, the, it, it puts a different drag on the machine or it doesn't allow the attachment to work the way you want it to. So there are some very important specifics. And what they had going on in the earlier development of some of the digital machines was that people were, were making attachments or getting a hold of attachments from other devices and plugging them in and messing up the machines. So they solved that problem by putting a different plug on it altogether. 
Okay. And, and that's why I have different uh, adapters that we can, you know, as long as we know where they're going. And for example, we've had people call and want to want to buy an attachment from us, and then we'll want to know what machine are you using this on. Not because we just don't want something that we're building being put on another machine, or we don't want to use something that someone built that could damage one of our machines for you, and, and that it's going to do that. So we try to ask those questions when people want to want to do that. I see. I understand. Okay. I, I appreciate uh, appreciate you answering that. And I got one more question. Okay. I know you're a busy guy, but I, I got to ask this because I've got a patient that uh, that that has this reaction when I uh, when I use the Simeon. I've had a lot of good success since I've had uh, since I've been using the Simeon this uh, this past month. But uh, she uh, she has anxiety problems, and so I put the loop around her neck. Mm-hmm. And she she gets a uh, good benefit out of it, but she said it feels like that she's getting a lot of pressure that's built up in her base of her head, uh, and I don't know if that's just toxins coming out or. Uh, so I said, well, maybe I'll try to treat this uh, with using another, maybe using the pad instead of uh, you know instead of uh, putting the loop around your neck because. It's be, we would be closer to your head. So <clears throat> would that be a viable way to, to maybe treat the, uh, this this lady because she's getting good benefit out of it, and I'm even doing it on her dog, and he's, uh, without going into a bunch of uh, talking about it, uh, the dog's doing well with it, but uh, she she says, yeah, I'm get, I get this pressure in my head. And uh, so I, it, it kind of puts an alarm bell, and I go, well, well I, I don't want something to happen. No, I don't think anything's going to happen. But what you what you are doing, I mean, you don't know it, what is cause. What could she have that is uh, uh, restricting blood flow? What is she? You know, people have stress. Could be sinuses. If she's got yeah. sinus issues, and so now we're trying to, you know, when when you when you have sinus issues, and you go outside. Oh my gosh, it's different than being inside. Or you get in an airplane, and it's totally different again. So she could have some issues like that. That when you go over her head with the loop, and it's going like this that you could be uh, directly impacting that sinus which causes pressure in her head as she's feeling things move and change. So most assuredly you could take the paddle and, and treat the back of her head for example on the low setting uh, or medium setting but I'd start on low and treat the back of the head or even the side uh, to to help with that and you would do that in you you would do that in you, you wouldn't necessarily have to do the shoulder area if you use the paddle or the butterfly you could put it over the head and you're really not uh, totally influencing the area of the sinus but also keep in, in remembering that using the machine in general if you treated her shoulders you're going to improve her blood flow to her head, which is going to help her anxiety. The machines provide a sense of well-being. And that's where they learned that it would be beneficial with depression. And so now they went out and did studies. And there are devices that are FDA approved for depression and anxiety. And it's just the idea that you're treating, the, if you treated her with a mat or something and treated her whole torso, you're going to help her anxiety. Yeah, so, yeah. It, well, it, she's getting good results and I've noticed that people that I've tra treated about 13, 14 people now and, and a lot of them will just go to sleep there you go. So, yeah, so there you have it. Yeah, no, you, you, to do it, approach it from a different standpoint. I'm, I'm thinking it could be any number of things, but this loop over the head on the shoulders coming like this, if that's, if I think that's what you're doing. Maybe you want to approach that a little differently. Take the paddle on a low setting at the back of the head. Use the, the paddle in the middle of the back at the very top of the back, just below the neck. And <clears throat> because all the nerves are going up that way, the oxygen is coming up that way. And you, you could put the paddle over this part of the neck and upper chest to get the blood as it's coming into the head without necessarily putting the pulse all the way up into the head. So that, yeah. that's how I'd approach it, uh, Ben. Great yeah. question. Yeah, I don't have the paddle, but I do have the, the cushion. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll yeah, that'll work. So I was, yeah, so anyway, thanks, uh, all right, buddy. thanks for answering the questions. And I wrote something in there, but you don't have to answer because you already did about the connection. Okay. So. Great. Uh, you have a great day. And Thank you so much. See, uh, see you next week. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Let's see. I believe we got uh, one call that came in. Let's see if I can find it. Um, yeah. Let's call this uh, back. 
oh, I don't want that. I don't need a message. I don't want to try to call this person back here because they called. Um, here we go. I want to call this one. Let's see if they answer. Okay, let's see what we get here. Hello. Hello, this is Pat calling you back. Hi, this is Lori Reese from Southwest Ranches, Florida. Hi, Lori. How are you? Hi, it was nice to meet you at the RRP. Good. I'm sorry I didn't get enough time to spend with you guys because I had tons of questions, but we had uh, a horse competing in two disciplines, and the reason of my call today was I've been competing in eventing and dressage. Okay. You there? Um, yeah, go ahead. So I've been competing for over 30-some years, and after the have, having done an event, in one day, every all three phases and a three-hour span is very difficult on these horses. Yes, it is. And the next day, we were to compete in dressage. And I used uh, the Madden Wave. I'm not yet certified. I haven't had time to actually just get on the course and get it done. But uh, I've been treating the whole body for about 10, 15 minutes on each side and the joints on this horse. And his recovery rate was unbelievable. He came back. The next day and took a very great score for dressage which normally i was would not expect from all the jumping and exhaustion and the heat so i was very very pleased on the recovery using this machine great. so i just wanted to send it out there for those that are listening thank you very much and I'm glad, it was nice to meet you and get a chance how did you how did you do overall how was your re experience well i, I didn't ride my uh, my partner rode, and she ended up tenth in dressage. Good. Out of I don't know, I think there was ended up being about 115 riders that completed. That's tenth is wonderful. I, I know, I know it. And we were uh, dressage was really. I mean, we we love eventing. I mean, dressage is always part of it, but uh, there were some great competitors there, and just thrilled on the recovery process because I'm always neurotic about. That, and that is why we bought this machine. Well, thank you so much and uh, for sharing that. It was nice to see you there, and we'll see you again. Thank you. Yep, yeah, we'll be uh, looking forward to getting certified and getting some more attachments now that I've been listening to some of uh, these uh, Office presentation hours. and calls. Yeah. I've, uh, you know, clearly I need some uh, some new equipment, new attachments, so I'm excited. Very Good excited. deal. Thanks, Lori. Have a great day. All right. Thank you very much. Uh huh. Bye bye. Well, that was a great, uh, Lori. I did. I do remember talking to Lori at the Retired Racehorse Project. Coming in tenth out of 110, 120 horses is incredible. Uh, congratulations on that with uh, with your horse, Lori. And and the key, and she pointed out, recovery is so important. Not only can we help the the animals feel better, and and when they go to the go to the ring or go to the trail ride or whatever they're doing, it's it's really cool from that perspective. But to be able to to help with recovery uh, is a very is a very good deal and, and a very viable thing. So uh, great calls today, great questions. I didn't get through all the questions. I'm going to get into them more. Uh, next week. I certainly appreciate you uh, being here today. If you have questions, send us an email, give us a call, whatever the situation might be. One more call. Just got to do it. One more call. Let's see who we got. Yes, who is with me? Hi, Pat. This is Krista Rexon. Yes. I am calling because I'm treating a gentleman who has a blood clot. And okay. I'm wondering, will the PEMF break up that blood clot? And if it does, is there any risk of sending that anywhere else in his body? Okay, you certainly want to know if the person's on any blood thinners, uh, if the doctor is concerned about their blood clots. Uh, for example, there are people that have blood clots that the doctors say, yeah, it's there and we got to keep an eye on it and monitor it, but you can run, you can go do things and yep. do that kind of stuff. Um, if you know where it is, would I treat over the blood clot? Not necessarily. Uh, okay. But but to treat the person is not, if they're going to, if they can walk and exercise and do things, the fact that you're treating in their low block, low back should, or upper shoulder or whatever, 
whatever it may be, would should have no impact on that. Although I would certainly default on the uh, error on the side of saying, hey doc, this is what we're gonna do. Do you mind? And and so on and so forth. But over the years, it, it's just been as long as you understand. Um, uh, I, have a, I had a friend uh, when we were younger <clears throat> that had blood clot issues and, and he was always on medication and always careful about what he did and I would not treat him uh, so, because yeah so, so that that's the case this gentleman is definitely on blood thinners because he has uh, AFib um, and, and that's so, okay it, it, that, that's okay as long as you know the, the question it comes down to uh, uh, how, how the doc uh, feels about that but I would certainly ask those questions the, the blood clot, they, well, and I'm not exactly sure that I'm getting 100% from him what the doctor said to him. I'm a registered nurse of 18 years. Um, anyway, he uh, he says he has concussive syndrome, which I don't uh, uh, I, I don't contest. He's been a cowboy his whole life. Um, he's 78. He got bucked off last year um, on uh, Halloween and uh, had a concussion and also uh, really messed up his leg and a bunch of other things. And he's had so much pain. And of course he refuses to take any medications because he's an old cowboy. Right. Uh, <laughs> and so I treated him yesterday for the first time. He said that the, that the doctor said that he has this, this clot in his brain that has been there for some time, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because the body itself will break up a clot over time. You don't generally have a clot for a long period of time in one place. But um, so anyway, I treated him. I did. I did do his head and I did his neck and everywhere else. And he said, like maybe 30 minutes after I left, he dropped something on the floor and he bent over and just picked it up. And he, his wife said that he was like dancing around the kitchen because he said, I haven't been able to do that in a year. There you go. So. No, it's really, I'm finding some really fantastic things with the machine, but, um, yeah, so I just wanted to know, because I, after I left, I got to thinking about that, and I thought, huh? Because he what? didn't tell me about it until afterward, obviously. There you go. And, and you're a registered nurse, so you understand that. So error on the side of safety. But if he, you know, again, I'm not a doctor and I'm not, I don't make diagnoses and things like that. But if the doctors aren't very concerned about a blood clot in his head and he's had it for a number of years, they, they feel pretty safe about what he's doing on an active daily basis uh, well, uh, in that type of situation. Horses, and if, if he can get on, although he hasn't been able to get on because of pain. So we're hoping to get him back where he can get back on his horse. That's wonderful. That's, Krista. That's, wise, that's love, you know. Right. I missed your last name. I'm sorry. Rexon. R-E-X-I-N. Oh, got it. Okay. Krista, thank you so much for, for the call. Mm, thank you. Have a great week. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, the good call. Always error. If you got a person that gives you a question like that, make sure that they clear it with their doc or you ask the right questions so you can better take care of them and uh, protect yourself, uh, that whole type of thing. Great questions today. Thank you for being with me. We've run over a few minutes here. I'm late for a meeting, so i uh, be back next Tuesday for the MagnaWave office hours. I enjoy talking with you and uh, look forward to uh, helping us all learn and grow. Wave on.